The issue which has been swept down the centuries, and which will have to be fought sooner or later, is the people versus the banks. Lord Acton The Financial Times recently announced a merger between the Rothschild and Rockefeller banking dynasties. The first thing we must note is that the Financial Times is a Rothschild-owned paper, and would not give any real details other than the glowing propaganda spin of, of Lord Rothschild's latest move. I would like to speculate on what this could mean based off of many years of studying these two criminal families. First, this merger does not change the balance of power in the world. It is Rothschild's RIT partners buying a minority stake in Rockefeller's asset management company. This is nothing like them selling each other shares of the Federal Reserve or anything of that magnitude. I do think this move could be signaling the danger that their frontmen and banks are in, and their desire to set up a new institution to rise after the collapse of major Wall Street firms. When you look at the creation of the Federal Reserve, you see the Rothschilds and the Rockefeller banking dynasties merge back then to create a new monetary paradigm. This recent move might be the same thing, but just getting ahead of the curve. Think about the reality of the death of the dollar and most of the world's major currencies and all of the power the Anglo-American empire has created. Wouldn't it be smart to sacrifice insolvent Wall Street firms and paycheck players like Jamie Dimon, Blythe Masters, Ben Bernanke, and Barack Obama to the angry public while they move all the real wealth from J.P. Morgan's silver and gold vaults into this new chimera institution? After all, that is exactly what happened when the Rothschild oligarchs were expelled by Putin after years of raping and looting Russia. Gusinsky, Berezovsky, Chernoy, and many other oligarchs had been driven out of the country, but one still remained. He was young, energetic, ambitious, rich, in other words, a potential rival for Putin. You see that in the institute, Khodorkovsky was first of all taught a lesson in public in front of the TV cameras. Off camera, he was advised to leave the country, but when he refused, he was arrested. The arrest was conducted as if he were a dangerous terrorist, and he was thrown into prison. The whole performance served as a warning to the entire country. When Putin arrested the chief oligarch, Mikhail Kordidovsky, it was later disclosed to Putin that all of Mikhail's shares were transferred to Jacob Rothschild in London, beyond Putin's reach. The Rothschild frontman was sacrificed to rot in jail, and the real assets were transferred to the Rothschild godfather in London. This new Rothschild-Rockefeller merger came out of David Rockefeller's move to introduce Lord Rothschild with the head of the Rockefeller Asset Management, Reuben Jeffrey. Our community should spend more time on guys like Reuben Jeffrey because they are higher up on the food chain than people like Blythe or Jamie Dimon. He's a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations. In 1992, he was a partner of Goldman Sachs. He was an early supporter of Bush's 2000 presidential campaign. After 9-11, Bush appointed Jeffrey to be a special advisor to the Lower Manhattan Development. In 2003, he moved to become a special advisor to the Coalition Provisional Authority in Iraq and the Pentagon. In 2004, he served as a member of the United States National Security Council. President Bush nominated Jeffrey as Undersecretary of State for Economic, Business, and Agricultural Affairs on April 16, 2007. Finally, Reuben Jeffrey serves as the Senior Advisor to at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. On July 27, 2010, Jeffrey was hired to be CEO of Rockefeller & Company, a New York-based asset manager with $27 billion under management. Now get this. In 2005, Reuben Jeffrey was named the chairman of the Commodities Future Trading Commission, the CFTC. This alone makes me wonder if they really know what's going to happen with this Ponzi paradigm and how important gold and silver are going to be in the establishment of power in the next paradigm. Especially after the Rothschilds left the London Bullion Market Association in 2004, after 200 years of ownership. I believe that the fraud had gotten so large even back then that the Rothschilds wanted to distance themselves from it. And now we have a Rockefeller man that has intimate knowledge of the fraud at the CFTC and the COMEX. The time to buy is when there's blood on the streets. Baron Rothschild. I think it is prudent for these Anglo-American banking dynasties to distance themselves from the mess that they have created. 
More importantly, they can consolidate real wealth under their own personal wealth management companies, which they can then use to buy up corporations and national assets, much like how the Rothschilds did in the collapse of the Soviet Empire. When the Rothschild oligarchs were buying up massive amounts of wealth in the Soviet Union, there was usually only one Rothschild oligarch at a time to buy up the Soviet state asset auctions. The Rockefellers would not only provide capital, but an extensive network of insiders to facilitate and limit any competitors from challenging their rock-bottom offers after the collapse. I believe that around the same time the Anglo-American powers will set about creating a war to challenge the rising power of the BRICS nations, to drive the masses back under their projective seal and establish a new monetary order. The Financial Times article finishes with a further consolidation of the once-divided Rothschild dynasty, with the healing of the rift between Jacob Rothschild and his cousin Evelyn de Rothschild. Lord Rothschild's reorganization highlights the fact that in today's world, a banking group cannot afford to operate as a network of sporadically aligned regional fiefs. To improve the performance of the group, we need to bring it under one umbrella, one person said close to the family. David René de Rothschild is in control of the French fortune. They are currently merging with the British operation under one unit. There is also an effort to bring the Swiss-based Rothschild, Edmund de Rothschild group, headed up by Benjamin de Rothschild, into the consolidation process. In another article I dug up on the Financial Times, there is a hint that they are preparing much like we are to get ahead of this inevitable crisis. The Rothschild Group has seen its assets under management decline in the first half of the financial year, which started in April, which Lord Rothschild described as some of the most torrid markets in my lifetime. He went on to say, The latest results keep us ahead of the game, but it is the game itself which is unpleasant and which we are determined to address, he said in November of last year. When the Rothschilds become determined to do something about the game, people better get ready for the board to be flipped and a fight to break out. So here you have the monopoly men of the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers consolidating the Anglo-American power ahead of the game-changing paradigm shift. It will be very interesting to see how the pieces move on this grand chessboard. But the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, despite their immense power and wealth, do not operate in a vacuum. There are forces out there that are potentially more powerful than these banking dynasties.